Oh, JD here, Tyrell Limits, and it's been quite a while since I did a video, particularly Grayson video, and I'm really, really happy to be back. And this is from WOR Mexico. Not sure what round this was because I joined this league halfway through the season, and yeah, it definitely is WOR. Done quite a while ago, about two or three weeks ago now. And this was a pretty insane race. As you can see, this was live streamed. So this race is live streamed every single Monday. And we're at Mexico here today, as I said. Invalidated the first lap. And as you may notice, I'm actually on the hyper soft tire, which people think is a suicide around here. But the two stop strategy, particularly after the patch, is actually quite viable around here. And if you can get through the traffic, it can work extremely, extremely well. Although the one stop probably is the slightly faster strategy, because you're not held up by traffic or anything, or only really in the first stint. It probably is slightly the faster one, but I decided to do this because qualifying, although it has been going quite well recently, I just really wanted to get track position and I felt I had good pace around here. I felt if I could start at the front of the field, then hopefully my aim was really to just get away and make that strategy work. So this is my fastest lap on the Hypersoft tyre. Although it's middle of the session, my last lap just couldn't really get a lap in. But this lap here was pretty decent. I was pretty satisfied with this, particularly this last sector was very good. First sector, middle sector, a little bit hesitant. Some calls missed an apex slightly in the, in the middle sector, you may notice at the start of it. But the last sector here it was um, pretty nice. Imagine hook up this pretty nicely. And corner cut that massively going through I think Mansell corner I think coming off here now stays nice and tight to the start finish line and we do a 12.7 which I was reasonably happy with I thought that was pretty strong but we're coming to the end of the session now and that was just enough for pole just under two tenths faster than OMG it's Joe with KJ Jane uh, Gamer I think the next quickest on the Hypersoft so we've got a pretty good big buffer to the people on Hypersoft but Joe unfortunately is actually starting next to me on that, that ultra soft tyre where he can do a one stop and starts have been something I've definitely improved since this video I've definitely improved it a lot since this but coming into this one I was still a little bit anxious of how good a start I get because it is absolutely crucial that I get a good start for this strategy I need to be ahead really for this first stint and going into the corner because I imagine make my tyres last pretty well when practice round here so I felt if I could just stay ahead in that first corner there's a, fan, a really good chance that we can win this race but it's unfortunate because the ultra soft runs were actually quite close around me there wasn't really too many hyper soft people ahead of them so they're going to be all around me so I can't really have that really <laughs> those people in between hard to say but those people in between to really hold them up for me I've really just got to get on with it now so Waiting for everyone to get onto the back of the grid here as we're going to have one, two, three lights, four lights, five lights. Trying to get a good start, putting in lean mix, but you can see Joe already is already past me after a few meters. He's already gone past, which I thought I had a pretty decent start, not really too much wheel spin there. But now it's just absolutely essential that we get past him. We need to get past him. But we're coming under attack from KJ Gamer. There's another guy in the hyper soft behind me in the Ferrari. Coming attack from him and actually going side by side. Really trying to outmuscle them in that corner, but he's still alongside me. Fair play to him. But we've got Joe who's actually got away slightly ahead. And now again, we just gotta stay ahead of him here because I just I knew that we just have some very, very strong pace on these tires and on the strategy in the race. I really need to be ahead of these guys just so I can really just get my full ribbon and flow. But we've got Joe who's just got a little bit of a gap ahead of me now as we already get one warning because track limits are just very very difficult around here it's probably guaranteed that most people are going to get at least one second's worth well three seconds worth of penalties at the very minimum but coming towards the end of lap seven now i can tell you i managed to stay with joe very very nicely for this stint as we've got wor pineco behind who's also on the ultra soft so he's going to go for one stop strategy the guys behind the hypers have really left them for dead so the pace I have on this tyre, I'm, ma I'm managing it extremely well. Probably a little bit better than expected coming into this race. And I managed to stay with them to the end of lap 7 where, in reality, their tyres should be in much better con condition than mine a few laps ago. 
and they should really be getting away from me. But at this point, I would say I'm actually probably quicker than Joe, despite being on the hyper soft tyre. So that's really comforting to see. The setup is working really well, driving really well, although we had that one warning. It's looking very, very good at this point, and just a bit annoyed because I felt if I was ahead of him, I may have been able to pull a slight gap, but I think he probably would have stuck with me quite easily around here because of the slipstream. So right now, although we had that bad start, I don't think we really lost out too much at all, but we're going to come into the pits, spotting the breaking point line first, just leaving a little bit of room on the table because I just didn't want to get a five-second stop go penalty. And now we are going to go on to believe is the medium super soft tire is in fact which is the hardest compound you can use around here because my strategy was to use the ultra soft towards the end of the race around lap 23 24 i'll be putting that on so now we've got to make it to those well to that 23 24 and we've come out and trapping now so we've come out of 12th place because we're one of the first cars that have actually pitted and we should be much quicker than the guy ahead the guys ahead and now it's all about getting through this traffic as quick as possible. It is literally what the strategy completely relies on. I really need to just get through them as quick as I possibly can. But we've already caught onto the back of WRC Bro 47, if I can read that right. Then one that coming out of the pits, we caught him that quickly. So we really just got to be making up as much time as we can, particularly on OMG, it's Joe and Pinecone, the two leaders. Really got to get ahead of them as quick as we can. But we're now, this is the problem. We've come behind VSR Dralex. And it's very difficult to overtake in this middle sector. It's really only a few corners or a few parts of the track you can actually overtake on. And this is really not one of them. Got quite a good exit to come off here now. I'm trying to really open myself up to get a really good exit here. But coming to this corner, there's pretty much no option. And you have to go single file through this really twisty section of the track. There's no real way to overtake here. So we're just losing quite a bit of time at this point. I was thinking about going down the inside of this next corner here, but I thought that was too much of a risk. Just get the DRS for the straight and then try and get that guy on the DRS straight. You can see they've got a, quite a big train of cars here. And as I said, you're just, I'm just being cautious because I just didn't want to get any damage. I'm really just trying to be sensible. And someone has gone into the pits and hopefully we should get a nice exit off this corner and should be a pretty comfortable move down the straight. But we've still got quite a, group, a few group of cars out ahead of us making a nice move and that's into seventh place for this race we're moving on now i think smith's in the head of me actually pitted in that next lap and now we're into the back of lcr leopard and you can see the two leaders going just past the start finish line now so we're starting to catch them ever so slightly but i feel we're losing a fair amount of seconds in this traffic we just need to get through it just that little bit better but luckily for me lcr leopard has actually gone into the pits and now we've gone behind vsr infamous Got the DRS now and the benefit of that and we should have a little bit of clear air just for a couple corners at least. And again, we just need to get through these cars as quick as possible. But it looks like we'll probably go catch him in the middle sector, which is the twistiest section off the track. So we just really, we just got to find any room possible. If, we, if there's any opportunity, now I know it really was the time to risk it because the, the two leaders are probably going to be pitting the next two or so laps. So thinking about it here, I was actually going in late, thinking about going down the inside of his right-hand side, but getting a very, very nice exit off this corner and going down the inside of his double right-hander. We managed to make the move sick and fair play to Infamous for leaving a little bit of room there. And we managed to do a really bold move into that corner, which is just what we needed. And we didn't really lose any time at all. And now we've caught VSR for Stappen towards the end of the lap, I believe. Managed to catch him really in the perfect place where I'm going to get the benefit of DRS and I'm not going to be held up in the sightings at all. And the two leaders are still out on track, so now we'll be able to see how much time we can actually start to gain in them because they really should be pissing towards, really, the end of the sap. And we should be able to see what the gap is going to be once we go through this first sector split. But you'll be able to see them just in the mini-map there. Let's see what the gap is. The gap is 13 seconds now. You can see we're going purple through here, so the tyres are still in pretty good condition. But coming across the line now, Two leaders actually pitted at the end of that lap. You can see we made up quite a big gap. We make up well over a second a lap on these tyres. But coming out the pits, Joe is not actually really that far behind, which was a little bit disheartening for me. I, I would have thought he would have been a little bit further behind that. But now it's time to push now. And these tyres are not really too old. So I was really hoping it would take him maybe a few laps to get up to temperature before he would start catching me and 
it's just about being as, as consistent as possible now. But we go through here and we've actually got a free second penalty. That is my first one of the race. And once that happened, I just knew I just really needed to get on with it now and just push as hard as I can. Try not to be too cautious, um, which I really hadn't been in this race, but just really now it's all or nothing. And towards the end of lap 22, Joe has actually started to catch me because my tyres are starting to go off quite a bit. I think I pitted on the end of lap 8 or something like that. So quite a few laps on these tyres and it's going to be a good time to pit now, but I wanted to wait until he actually got past me to really try and hold him up a little bit as possible because him going to the end of the race on the super soft tyres I know is not going to be an easy feat in the slightest at all. So we're going to defend this down the inside but with the length of the straight and the DRS it's going to be very very difficult to try and stay here but we do try. We try and go down the inside just to put him off a little bit but you can already see the grip and the traction he's going to have for this corner. You can see He's already gone coming off this corner and now it's probably going to be a good time to pit. And spearing off into the pits here, you can see he's well out of the DRS zone already. Being a little bit more aggressive on the pit entry this time because I know there's going to be a lot of time to make up. And we've only got 11 laps to make up a pit stop's worth gap to this race. So I want to win this race, which is exactly what I wanted to do because I've had a string of good results recently. I've been a lot more consistent again. Um, quite a few podiums I, I really want to start getting wins again and I feel this is a good stepping stone to do that and we've come out in fourth place luckily no one no real pressure from behind from anyone I mean we've already caught up to the back of WOR Thomas and again this should be a quite easy move because I think he's been on these tires for quite a while and we're on the ultra soft tire which is going to be a lot faster than the guys ahead of us I and mean, we have to see the gap and I think this is going to be my fastest lap of the race as well, which we always stay on board on. So we have one penalty at this point. I know I just need to just give it everything now. It's absolutely everything we need to. You can see in the video how far ahead they are already to go purple. It's 17.3 seconds to pine cone. And we've got 10 laps to do it. We've got to be well over a second a lap, almost two seconds a lap quicker than these guys here. So it was 17.3 for that first sector. Let's see what it is through this mirror sector. Let's see how much time we can actually make up through here. But luckily, we've actually saved quite a bit of fuel and you can already see the gap I have behind me. I've just absolutely left WOR Thomas for dead. That just really shows how strong the size and 16.6, that's six tenths in that middle sector alone. And coming across the line, we'll be able to see again what the gap is. So realistically, it was probably seven, above 17 and a half seconds at the start for that. Let's see what it is now. And the gap is now 16 seconds again. So I'd say about six tenths per sector. That's you know, almost two seconds a lap quicker than we've just gone than the here. But skip on towards the end of lap 31. VSR Stappen has gone out of the race. And we'll be able to look at the gap once again. Been pretty consistent. And the gap is under 10 seconds now. So we are we are currently on course to try and catch these guys. And come on towards the end of lap 34. You can visually see we can almost we can we can see Pinecone. On this straight, and the gap is under four seconds. My tyres are starting to go off now. You can see the drop off is about 1.5 seconds. But the guys ahead, their tyres should be absolutely screaming now in this race. The Super Sauce will probably be where well, they are in a lot worse condition than my tyres. And the drop off is going to be massive towards the end of this race. You can see how much time we've just gained visually and um, just by looking at the mini map on these guys. and. It's, it's pretty amazing how much time you can really make up on this two sub strategy because they're gaining so much time just for that first sector alone. It was 2.6 after the first sector, so we'll be able to see what the gap is going to be. It should be, I'd imagine, it'd be under two seconds going through the second sector this bit. So, managed to navigate this pretty nicely. And right now, I was just in a really, really good rhythm in this race, just really feeling on it. and. I wanted nothing more than the win. I didn't check how many penalties these guys had or anything at all. I was just fully focused on just trying to just get past Pinecone and then chase after Joe. You can see we gained another second in that middle sector again. So one lap to go now. And you can see the gap is fairly big to Joe. But considering how much we just caught Pinecone there. And we're going to have the benefit of DRS. Having quite a lot of ERS left. But we do have to watch the fuel slightly. I knew this was this was time now. I've got to try and make a move here and 
just do everything I can. So, go go down the inside here, really putting him off. Luckily, he didn't lock up, which actually forces him out wide. Really compromises him for this right-hander, which means we get a much, much better exit here. And now, we've got the DRS. We're going to go side-by-side side with him on this final lap of the race. And we're going to go around the outside of him here. Going side-by-side, side, making a little bit of contact. And now, we just push him out wide slightly. And that is the move done into second place. And we've got another sector of this race to go and it's still you never know what can happen you don't know if joe has got a penalty or anything at all and you can see how much we've actually pulled away from pinecone already so it looks like second place is probably going to be guaranteed for this race because i can't imagine that these guys don't have any penalties but we're going to still give it absolutely everything we can under two seconds now and if we just had one more lap there is a chance that we could have overtaken him but we still don't know he may have a penalty at the end of this race coming around the last corner now coming towards the line and let's see what the gap is going to be he's gone across the line now and he ah uh, we finished in second place in this race after having to catch him probably to Joel over 18 seconds we have managed to come home in second place which we did make that strategy work but I really, really wanted that win really, really badly. But that race was a great race to drive. Really enjoyed doing that. I made my strategy work very well compared to, I think, KJ game. The next closest kind of Hypersoft was seven, 16 seconds behind me or something like that. So, drove a really good race. Just so close to that win. But one more lap, I think we would have had it there. But thank you so much again for watching this. It's good to be back and for watching my streams. And I'll catch you next time. Peace.